What's up, Covalence friends? Welcome to part one of a two-part series on uploading files using Molter and Express. Now, I'm pretty sure I go into what Molter is and how it works uh, fairly in-depth in the coding section of this video, so we're just gonna get right into it. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. All right. We're gonna be using the Express Basics repo that was from a previous video. If you haven't watched it, I've included the link in the description below, but basically all it is is it's a very basic Express uh, application here and so if we go through it real quick we can just see that we create or we instantiate our instance and then we configure the instance and then we listen on a port which we've chosen as 3000 but if we hop into this configure function we can see that it's pretty simple we basically send this index.html for the root route and or for a root get request and we listen for or we use the uh, public folder as uh, static assets and we body parse um, requests as JSON, and then we have an API route. And this is kind of what we're gonna be using or focusing on this time around, or in this video to do uh, uploads. And then we have some error handling down here. So I highly recommend you watch that video if you're not familiar with Express. I would definitely kind of give you a little bit of background and how all this works and how middleware functions work, which Molter is just a middleware package. And so let's jump into this API. And for, you, for those of you who choose not to watch that video, we'll kind of just go through this API real quick. Um, you can see that uh, we kind of just look at the request.body and we log it. So we'll remove that because that's basically useless. It's just, it was an example from uh, the previous application. And here uh, we're gonna go ahead and this is actually just sending back a JSON um, route in the case that the actual route doesn't exist. And so uh, we'll leave that there for now, um, but Again, this would be kind of like because it's an API and because at first we're gonna be using form data, uh, this would be kind of a little bit strange to do for this particular route. And so you can leave this here for now and we'll kind of showcase it off a little bit, but it's not super important. Um, it's just basically an error handler for if this route doesn't exist, right? Or if a particular API route doesn't exist. But we have a V1 route here and we have our API V1 router. So we can pop into that, which is just right here and we log api v1 so we'll leave that in there just so we can actually see and make sure that we're getting through to this route and we're just calling next into slash users and so if we pop into that this is our slash users route so now we're uh, a couple levels deep we're actually slash api slash v1 slash users and we have our get request for the root route of that and we just basically send back this object we can leave that there but we have a post request here that would essentially handle every post request, right? It's for root and for anything, root slash anything, which should be handled as the ID. So we're gonna go ahead and just kind of like overwrite this. We'll add this little semicolon, which seems to be missing. And we're gonna change this to be avatar. And what we're gonna do in here is we're actually going to use a package called Molter, which is, um, it just defines middleware for us. And so what we wanna do is we wanna install this. So we're gonna do npm i molter. And, and since we're using TypeScript, we're actually going to add the types as well. So that should take a second to download and bam, it's done. Uh, let's make this a little bit smaller. And let's open up the npm page for molter just so we can actually see this documentation real quick. Um, but basically, uh, we're gonna be doing something kind of like this at first using this form. And we're actually gonna be using something exactly like this as well, which is gonna be using or defining a destination folder. And so basically we can just kind of see what's going on here. We have a couple different functions and let's see, we have a single array and fields function and we're gonna be using the single here. And it's, it's almost gonna be identical. We're gonna be treating this as if it's a user uploading their avatar. So we're basically going to copy this top example here. Uh, but if we kind of go down, we can see a little bit more here. Um, Molter has a lot of options. This is what actually ends up um, being put on the file, which we will log just to show you. But again, there's options here and uh, you can see the functions themselves are, these are all, these all return middleware functions. So each of these will return a function uh, with arguments, request, response, and next. And um, we're gonna be using this single one because it's gonna be a single field that we're gonna be uploading a file with. And there's also options for storage, right? So we're going to be creating um, disk storage, but we're gonna be using the destination option, which 
basically does do disk storage, I believe, but this would be for uh, refining and making it a little bit more robust or a little bit more customizable. Uh, they also have memory storage, which would just store the, uh, the, uh, the files in memory as a buffer. And you can also kind of extend this and create um, you know, your own storage engine, which again, you could upload this directly to Amazon S3, uh, GCP storage, anything, right? So um, it's super nice, it's very flexible, and honestly, it's everything you could need as far as uploading uh, with Express. And so highly recommend you use this. I believe there's also other NPM packages which extend this kind of like for doing S3 and whatnot, S3 uploads. So um, if you need that particular use case, Look for the package first before you need to just before you go into just creating your own storage engines. Most likely it exists, but if you need to create your own storage engine, it's actually not as hard as you would think it would be. And so let's go ahead, go back to the code. And so we're going to import Molter from Molter, and we're going to define our instance as um, uploads, and it just is Molter with the destination. And we'll just do the relative path of public slash uploads. And so the way Molter works in here, because um, we're actually importing this code and it's calling this function at this point in time, right? Uh, so actually how it works is you have to do it from your index because um, this is actually, or sorry, it's actually from your index out here because um, you're actually going to import this right index and then this is going to import um, the API itself here and so if you follow down the import path right it imports users here and so basically everything is imported all the way back out and we call the function at that point in time and so it's actually relative to this file here if that makes sense so um, when you're defining this uh, you actually have to define it relative to your index, your top level index. And so this will be in here, the public, and then we'll go ahead and just create this real quick. So we'll create our uploads folder, just so we know that that is where everything is going to be placed. All right, and then we're going to add this here. So uploads.single, and we're going to define the field as avatar. And so what this is gonna actually do it's going to look for a field name on the object as avatar. It's going to treat that as the file and it's going to place it as request.file. So if we log something here, if we console.log, um, let's see, request.body and console.log request.file. And then let's go ahead and just call next. We are going to try and get some sort of log here and um, Let's go ahead and go into our index next. So we have our index.html here. We're gonna go ahead and just change this. Uh, let's say file upload. And then instead of hello world, let's just change this to be file upload as well. And then we're going to create our form. The action is going to be slash API slash v1 slash user slash avatar. The method is going to be post and the encoding type is multi-part form data. So again, inside the form, let's do our input type file and let's name it avatar. Um, let's go ahead and put a hidden as well. So let's, oh, not hid, hidden. Um, let's name it just, uh, I don't know, let's name it field, why not? And then the value, uh, let's just say, let's see, field, we'll call it, um, let's just say something, why not? Drawing blanks today. And then we're gonna have our button as well. So our button is gonna be a submit button. And so we're going to define it as type submit. All right, and then we can make this look, we're not gonna focus on styling today, guys. So. Do not worry too much about that, but let's go ahead and just, you know, we'll text align the center here. Um, and then we'll say inside the form, we want a text align center. And we won't worry too much about the submit button. We'll just use the default styling there. And uh, let's see, if we have an image, let's just say, um, let's just say display block uh, with, let's say five M's. 
Um, let's give it a border radius, why not? Let's make it a circle. <laughs> and margin, zero auto, so we just wanna center that guy. Um, and right now we don't have an image in here, right? But what we're gonna actually do is we're going to serve back a file and uh, you know, allow it to just kind of display on the page or display the file or the image on the page, right? We just want to make sure that we actually uploaded something correctly and that we can actually show it as well. And so coming back here, um, we now, when we submit this, it should go through all the way to here. And then when we call next, it'll actually end up erroring with this error here. So we'll just get basically a JSON response back called invalid route. Um, that's because we're not doing anything. We're just calling next. And so let's go ahead and run this. I forgot to actually run it. Let's go back npm start. It's gonna compile, it's listening. So let's pop open a new tab, localhost 3000, file upload, let's choose one of these backgrounds. And then we're gonna go ahead and submit. So we got the invalid route, so we know it's actually doing something. And it looks like we did not get into we didn't log anything so we made a mistake somewhere guys let's see um we have avatar for post oh maybe we need i think we actually need a slash avatar so without the slash it might actually do users avatar which probably not a good idea so we actually need to um it's good to have hot reloading and like we want to be listening to typescript changes and whatnot we don't have this project set up to that that'll be another Another video where we'll actually set that up to auto compile when we make changes, but for right now we actually have to restart the server. So let's go ahead and go back to localhost 3000 and we're gonna try this one more time. So we got our error and now we actually get in there, right? So again, made that mistake. Don't make that mistake guys. Make sure that you include the forward slash. Um, but we can take a look here. So we actually see that the request.body takes the text fields. So we have field something. So if it was an input box, um, you know, it would do something very similar. It would put whatever the value is for that. And for our object here, this is our file. We can see the file name. It uses a unique identifier for this, but it is put in the right folder. So it's in public slash uploads here. And so what we can do instead of just calling next and getting this error, um, we can actually generate a file to send back, right? And so uh, for right now, I wouldn't recommend this as like the way you would want to do this, but let's just say uh, generate doc and we're going to create, this is gonna be a function and we're gonna pass in a file name and inside here we're going to just return a template and we're just going to use this index as basically a template right here so let's go ahead and pull this over and we're going to just say um, let's just call this avatar and uh, you know we'll just say my avatar and we're going to remove the script and the form all together and we're just going to put our image in here and the source is going to be slash uploads slash uh, the file name so file name and we can just say all is this all right so we're basically going to just send this text back and there's there's templating engines like i highly recommend using something like ejs for this um, we're going to make sure that we have our css in here but if you really needed to, you can generate all your HTML yourself using something like this. This is basically all EGS does, um, and it's a pretty simple package, uh, but we're not using a templating engine right here. So we're just going to send, or sorry, res.send, and then we're going to call generate doc, and we're gonna pass in request.file.filename. Uh, um, and, it, and it doesn't like this because we actually have to say if not not request.file. So TypeScript doesn't like it because it doesn't know that request.file exists, right? And so now we should be able to remove that and we don't get no errors. So it's gonna generate this document. Um, we can go ahead and just kind of remove this for now since we don't need this. Uh, but now it should actually send back the document and let's go ahead and test it. So we're going to, again, 
restart this server. All right, so we're going to go back to localhost 3000. We're going to choose our file, choose the same beach brown, and we're going to submit. So we can see that you know we get this kind of oval in here. It's a little small. Let's go ahead and kind of redo this. But um, you can see that the file is actually added again. So um, these will keep adding up, right? So every time you upload the file, it'll add that new file in there. So uh, you may need some sort of process for cleaning this up. But let's go ahead and just change this to be 10. All right. And then we're going to go back to this. We're going to reload it. And let's go ahead and upload this guy. Submit. All right. Beautiful. So now we have this bigger avatar. It uploaded the file. Um, if we pull up you know, the actual document here, we can see that it is referencing uh, localhost 3000 uploads and then that unique file name. So uh, you may have to play around with MIME types, things like that. But if you define your own storage, you can actually just add the uh, suffix if you wanted to like add .jpg to the end and then the browser shouldn't have a problem. But um, you know, this particular Chrome browser also doesn't have an issue figuring out that this is a JPEG and it does know how to actually show this. And so a lot of that is sometimes included when the file is uploaded and stored. So because the file is stored with that info, the browser knows how to handle it. But um, if you store this in something like Google Cloud, you may actually have to set the MIME type, which you would be able to do when you upload it. Um, you know, the same goes for S3. They have options for including the MIME type so that when you actually pull it from the URL, the browser knows how to, or it knows the encoding type and it knows how to actually display this. So again, this worked just fine for this use case. Um, now, because this is reloading the page, a lot of the time, you know, you may not, you may not want to do this. And so this particular one is for the form uploads only, but next video, we're actually going to be changing this to not use a form and instead using uh, something like, um, you know, an actual XML HTTP request, and it will allow us to also add a progress indicator. So uh, looking forward to that. And I will see you guys next time. All right. So again, this is part one of a two part series. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know that the actual use case of it is a little strange because again, it's reloading the page. And in theory, when you're building an application, you're not going to want to do that when you're uploading an avatar. So that's where part two comes in. We're going to be using an actual API request to simply upload the file and then display what we need. So again, uh, please be on the lookout next week. We'll be releasing part two. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe so you get the notification for when part two is released and we will see you next time.